and welcome to the Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Kate Harper from the 61st District in Montgomery County. And we're in Montgomery County today at the 2016 Senior Games. More than 500 senior athletes are competing and even more are here for the Senior Expo where products and services and information and advice geared to seniors is on display. Today we're going to go around, interview a few people, see what it's like, and maybe next year you'll be with us too. Well, I'm here with Karen Flukfelder, who's been participating in the Senior Games for about nine years. Karen, what events are you in this year? Uh, archery, uh, two kinds of basketball, indoor and outdoor, uh, par three golf, mini golf, and I'm about to participate in the softball and football throw and the walk today. Okay, now I would never ask a lady her, her age, but I do know you taught at Methacton. In fact, you were science chairman, right? Yes. So how many years did you teach at Methacton? 34 and a half. <laughs> All right, and is, um, being an athlete something you've come to recently or is that something you've done your whole life? No, I, in fact, I went to Methacton High School and played hockey, basketball and lacrosse there. And then I did that in college. And then I came back and coached at Methacton. So I, I've been an athlete all my life, I guess. <laughs> okay, so uh, you still live in, in the Methacton School District. And um, what is it that you like about the senior games and what brings you back year after year? Well, I like the people. You get to meet all sorts of different people from all over the place, and that's really nice. I like the energy, uh, great energy. And another thing that I've discovered this year that I like is the uh, venues. Uh, they highlight uh, parks in Montgomery County uh, for different events like archery or golf or whatever. And so I'm getting to see Montgomery County parks that I never knew existed and are very nice, and I'll probably go back. Okay, so why don't you tell me some of the places you've been this week? The, the events go on all week and you've yes. been around, so tell me where you've been. Uh, Mason's Mill Park for archery, and that's a beautiful little park, and Alverthorpe Park for uh, mini golf and par three golf. And then the outdoor basketball was over in Gwynedd, and the indoor basketball was in Hatfield, so. So you get around. Oh yes, <laughs> lots of miles on the car. So if you had some idea for improving the senior games, what would that be? I don't know. I, last year I would have said get more people. This year they have quite a few people, which is great. So. All right, good. Good to talk to you. They actually have more than 500 senior athletes competing this week in the games. Very impressive. All right, good luck on your next event. Thank you very much. Well, I'm here to, right now with a very busy guy, Phil Brady, who's running the games this year. Now, Phil, how many athletes do we have? 510, an all-time record. Wow, okay, and how, how old are they? Our oldest is Ken Hartman, he's 96 years old, and we start at age 50, so between 50 and 96. So if I were in better shape, I could compete? Absolutely, I'm sure you definitely could. All right, now, many people don't know this, but the senior games were started by Representative George Sauerman. Yep. But they're carried on by guys like yourself who actually work in the park and recreation departments of the townships and boroughs around the county. So how does that work? Well, essentially, if you think of Senior Games as a big pie, we divvy it up and cut it up and we all do a little bit of the work. Many hands make for light works. So we're very fortunate to have our parks and recreation professionals. We have folks from state um, official offices. We have volunteers and that's how we do all the work. We're very, very lucky to have such a dedicated group of volunteers. Right, so my, my right, it takes about a week of uh, activities here. How long does it take to put that together? We start planning in October, so about eight months. Yep, we'll be starting in October. We do a lot in the fall, then we really get pushing in January. So about you know, about eight months. All right, now we just interviewed a lady who's been coming for nine years. Is, is that normal? Do people come back? We love it when they come back. We, uh, we got 160 new participants this year, but we do get a lot of returnees. They're like family. We see them every year. They come back. Sometimes they take a year off for surgeries or whatever, and then we love to get them back the next year. So 
the more the better. All right, now um, we're at the community college, which is beautiful, and there are a lot of space here for activities, but I understand that some of the activities are carried on other places. Could you talk about that? Absolutely, that's a great question. This year they're doing some construction here, and we hope this is our home. This is the spine of the games. It's in the center of the county. We move around to parks. We use Wentz Run Park in Whitpain Township. We use the Greater Plymouth Community Center, Alvinthorpe Park in Abington. We use um, a park in Upper Moreland for archery. Bucksmont Indoor Sports for a bunch of events and the Indian Valley YMCA. So we find venues throughout the county so we can take it closer to the residents. And also so that the seniors have a wide variety of activities, right? Right, we added two new activities this year, orienteering, which we did at the Narstown Farm Park, and then we also added croquet, which we did at uh, a Mennonite church up in Harleysville. So. Okay, now I know croquet, and I think I know orienteering, but what is that all about? Orienteering is like a scavenger hunt and a race together. You run a, walk around the park with an electronic device and find different stations through the park, and the person who finishes with the best time is the gold medal winner. So we kind of explore the park in a timed manner. But they have to pick up something or drop off something it's or a, otherwise check in? It's a, Yes, you check in electronically with like a little bracelet almost that you swipe when you get to these spots throughout the park and that way it knows when you're there and it records it at the end and we can check and see who did it the quickest and they're your winner. So it's a good way to explore the park, almost like a race in a way. Well, that's pretty and cool. And you gotta use a compass to find your way around because that's your only direction. Well, this is a senior games, mm -hmm. but do they still know how to use a compass? They do, they do very, very well with the compass. That's a great question. We didn't lose anybody. We were very happy. It was the first year and it was pretty exciting. So I, mean, I think we had 23 participants, so. Yeah, I'm not sure younger people, unless they've been Boy Scouts, <laughs> could use a compass. Exactly. There's a club, a Delaware Valley Orienteering Club that came out and showed us how to do it and proposed it to us. And they were a big partner for that, so. As volunteers? Yes, as volunteers, absolutely. It was a, a, a great partnership for us. Same with the croquet. A croquet club came to us and said, we want to do a senior games croquet. So they set it up for us, came up with the rules, and pretty much ran it. We sent some volunteers to staff it, but it's a great partnership as well. And croquet's fun. Anybody can do that. You right. know? So a good time with that this year. A lot of good feedback. So if somebody was watching and thinking, maybe next year I'll do it, what would you tell them? I would tell them, don't hesitate. Come and see what we're all about. We bowl, we swim, we do croquet, we do darts, we do billiards. There's, we have something for everybody, we really do. Once you get into one event, then you might do two, and then you start to make friends, and the next thing you're doing nine or 10. That's what All right, we now see. where would they find out about this? We have a website. Um, you can Google us, we're on there. We also have a Facebook, or you can call your local Parks and Recreation Department or your state official's office, and they'll put us in contact with us. So that's it. We have a mailing list. We do an email newsletter. We try to stay in contact with the seniors all year long. So talk to me a little bit about these volunteers. Who are they? Where do they come from? And maybe somebody out there watching wants to volunteer. What do they do? We love to have volunteers. They keep score. They organize the game. They check people in, do things for safety, hand out T-shirts. We get a lot of volunteers from corporate partners in Montgomery County. United Healthcare probably sends 250 employees out to staff the games. They help run the bowling. They help with the swimming. They do the timing. We have some individual volunteers. Uh, the Hill at White Marsh, another company came to us and said we'd like to help out. But if you contact us, we'll definitely, we definitely need all the help we can get. We'll train you. Uh, we have a, a short training program to make sure everything is done to our standards. And uh, we need a lot of bodies, we really do. All right, now I know state reps also contribute Absolutely. staff to the effort, right? They do contribute staff and they also handle our mailing. They pay for our mailing, the state reps contribute from that. They also are a big help from the legislative angle of it, making sure we get everything we need to get into parks. Uh, we use Gwen and Mercy because of a state reps uh, efforts yourself. You helped us with that because we didn't have anywhere to have tracks. So yeah, state reps, it's a big part of what we do. Always have been, it was founded by a state rep, so with George Sowerman. So That's right. very fortunate to have all the volunteers that we have. Okay. Now, I know that at lunchtime today, we're going to be giving an award to a bocce club. What's that all about? The Narstown Bocce Club came to us about 10 or 12 years ago and said, hey, we want to add bocce to the senior games. Not only did they add it, they feed everybody, they bring dinner, they referee it, they organize it, and they've done that for since 2001 or 2002, so 15 years, these great group of volunteers have been coming out from their home in Narstown and, and holding the Senior Games bocce, so we're gonna award them. And then also Doug Wendell from Abington Township, who's retiring shortly, has been a big help with cameras and taking pictures and helped us at archery. So it's important that we, you know, we notice these people and give them credit for all the work they do behind the scenes. So, Good, absolutely. We Thanks. Their help.
Inside the Senior Expo at the Senior Games, I've come across Michelle Burke, a lawyer with the Montgomery Bar Association, who has a table here because of the Elder Law Committee. What is the Elder Law Committee? The Elder Law Committee is an integral part of the Bar Association. We reach out and serve seniors in Montgomery County. All right, now you're holding a book that I personally like because I think it's very helpful, but could you tell the folks what is the Elder Law Handbook? The Elder Law Handbook is a publication that we distribute free of charge and can be found in our wonderful representatives' offices and throughout the community. It explains all about elder law, about wills, about probate, about planning for the future for seniors. It especially explains about powers of attorney and other documents that lawyers and seniors may encounter. Right, sometimes a person finds out that they've been named the agent in somebody else's power of attorney and then they have jobs to do. What kind of jobs would they have to do? Well, writing a power of attorney and naming an agent is a very important thing. So they're very smart if they've been named an agent for someone else. What they could do would be to handle financial matters as well as health care matters. Even there are two different powers of attorney. There's one for health care and medical and a living will. And then there's a financial, durable power of attorney and that empowers them to act for a senior if a senior cannot handle their financial and other matters themselves. So today, are you talking to seniors about these issues? We certainly are. We're here to educate the community and help. And, and you're uh, a lawyer yourself, and you're, the book would tell you what a power of attorney is and things like that? Absolutely. The book will explain what a power of attorney is, and better yet, it can help you plan for that visit to a lawyer to write your power of attorney. All right. Now, what are the most important things seniors need to know about legal things, like elder law? What is that? Elder law is any law that affects seniors. It also affects the children and family members so that we can plan for the future and also plan for the present if we need to move um, to, make, to get services in our home if we need help. Uh, and also it deals with planning for the future such as leave, writing a will and about estates. Okay, now um, what's the Montgomery Bar Association? It has nothing to do with drinking, or oh, maybe a little, but not much, right? Uh, it depends when you're there. The Montgomery Bar Association is an association of lawyers, and we reach out to the community to educate through the Elder Law Handbook and participating in wonderful senior events, like the Senior Olympics that you sponsor. We also have education for lawyers, as well as education for the community and we have a lot of fundraisers. We also have a charitable arm, the Montgomery Bar Foundation, and we try to give back to the community, and we're located in Norristown, so we have community runs, we have other educational events that will serve the community. Well, thank you, Michelle. Now, I know everybody jokes about lawyers being expensive, but you're here as a volunteer today, aren't you? Yes, I am, just like you are, and also another volunteer and also low cost and uh, free service of the Bar Association is our loyal referral service. So if you need a lawyer, you can call up and say, I'd like a lawyer in wherever area that, where you live and whatever topic you need assistance with. And they're also, the consultation is only $40 for half an hour. And there also is legal access, which the Bar Association runs and provides low cost uh, low-cost legal services, not just to seniors, but to all residents of Montgomery County. Okay, and we're going to put the, uh, the name and address of the Bar Association uh, on your screen in just a moment. And thank you, Michelle Berkey. Anything you want to add? Well, thank you so much for participating and sponsoring this great event. Hello, Roseanne. Nice Hi, to be Dad. here with you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, people see Transnet's colorful buses around, and they don't even know what Transnet is. What is Transnet? Transnet is a transportation company that we operate throughout Montgomery County. We, our main office is in Bluebell. We actually have six partners that do the transportation spread out throughout our county. Uh, we cover from Pottstown down to the Mainline area. We go up to the western part of the county, East Greenville, Red Hill, 
And we, all of our programs that we have, our Senior Shared Ride, our persons with disabilities, our Medicaid recipients that need it, get back and forth to a doctor's appointment, we are able to provide the ride for them. Now, are these rides um, low cost or are they expensive or how does that work? If, if it is a senior, that is a low cost ride for seniors. Actually, in our county, you can st be 60 years old um, and have rides wherever you, whatever your need may be. Grocery store, visiting a friend, going to the beauty parlor, going to a bank. Um, and then we also have the medical assistance transportation. Anyone who is on Medicaid that needs to get back and forth to a doctor's appointment, Transnet's able to provide that ride for them. And where does Transnet get its funding? Uh, funding depends on what program you're um, registered, but it's either through the state or the county. Okay, and if a person, you know, it's really hard being old in the suburbs when you lose your driver's license or decide you better give it up or your kids tell you to stop driving. So how do you cope with that at Transnet? Well, we let them know that they don't have to worry about sitting at home and doing nothing. Uh, the Shared Ride program for seniors is out there. Um, you know, they can either call Transnet and we'll send them out an application, go on our website, they can download an application, and like I said before, it can be used for any purpose, and the cost is a low-cost fee that they would have to pay. Okay, so instead of calling a taxi and hoping to see one, there are lots of parts of Montgomery County that never see a taxi cab. Right. This is something that you could do instead. Suppose you had a doctor's appointment, you want to go to the podiatrist. Uh, how would you handle that? If you already have your card and you've already signed up. All you have to do is call Transnet either the day before or two weeks ahead of time. Our office is there to uh, make reservations 7.30 to 3.30 and we will make the arrangements for you. Many times when you go to a doctor, you don't know what, when you're going to be through. A doctor could be running late. So you schedule a ride and let us know what time your appointment's going to be. And then just say, when I'm through, I'm going to call for a return. And that's all you do. All of the reservations and the calls, return calls, are all scheduled at Trans Transnet's main office. Right. Now, I know maybe a year ago now, Transnet went through a big change where they used a computer to schedule things. And it was a little upsetting. But how's that working now? Uh, I think most of the kinks have been worked out of it. Um, you know, trans uh, transportation is not a perfect science, so it's not, you know, going to be run, uh, you know, just perfectly. But I can really say with our new system, which is Ecolane, we're able to track where a driver is, how far away they are from picking someone up. Um, so it's a great, yeah, it's a great computer service that we have now. All right. Now, Roseanne, is there anything else you want to add about what Transnet can do for people who might be watching the show today? Uh, one thing you have to remember, if you give up driving or if you don't give up driving and you just want to go about the county where you're, maybe it's bad weather or your car is in the shop and you need to get back and forth to, to pick it up, it's a, Transnet is available out there. Once you sign up, your card has no expiration date and you can use it for any purpose at all. Okay, so sounds as if... If you're the right age, you should probably sign up just so you have the card if you might need it. Exactly. I think in Montgomery County, we have so many great services for senior citizens. I don't think many people are aware of, of how great this county is with their services for seniors. And, and Transnet is one of them. Okay. And I think we're going to put the information right up on the screen so folks can see where Transnet is and how to apply. Thank you, Roseanne, for talking to us today. I'm here with Kelly Dunbar who works at the Community College and today it's a very busy day at the Community College. Why does the Community College uh, sponsor and participate in the Senior Games? Well the college has been doing this for about, the games have been going on for about 31 years. So I've been here seven and I've participated in it every year. It's a great time of uh, year, great week for us. We hold a lot of events at the college. Um, we do it uh, for the love of the community. Um, we want people on campus to see our beautiful facilities um, and just, you know, just to bring them in and get them out, um, walking around and uh, focusing on health and wellness and, and they get some good competition throughout the week. So, And what do you do here at the college on, on a regular day? 
On a regular day, I focus on the assistant athletic director, so we uh, work in the athletic department, focusing on the athletes as well as campus recreation, intramurals um, at the college, and really trying to get some faculty and staff involved as well. Right, and I noticed that the uh, what we used to call the gym is, yeah. is wow, under construction. But where are you operating these days? We are in um, the Cathcart Annex, which is like a small trailer across the street. So yeah, the health and the health science center is going to be a big one. We're very excited. Um, hopefully, it'll be open by January of 2017. Um, We've had to push a lot of the, the games that were on our campus originally, um, like pickleball and all that stuff, off campus for during the construction season. So we're hoping to get that all back next year and have a, more of a, you know, a community atmosphere um, for, for that Friday on the senior games. Well, I have to tell you, we interviewed a lady who said she liked going around the county to do various things. So I think that's an advantage of the senior games too. That is, that is true, yep. And then we do our luncheon over at the Normandy Farm so they can kind of see you know, the different aspects and everybody's been wonderful in the community and a lot of great partners for these games. You know, what's interesting about it is many people have not been at the community college campus. Um, perhaps they were here um, maybe years ago when it was in Conchahawken above a storefront and they're amazed at, at how the college campus looks. What do you think about that? I think it's inter interesting, especially for me coming in. I, like I said, I've been here seven years and I've seen a lot of expansion um, on campus with the new buildings and the technology center and the fine arts center and now our building and then the science center's next. So yeah, I think if people haven't been here in a long time and they come, they're, they're shocked to see how beautiful and expanded our campus is. Now they probably know that the community college is a bargain for students who are coming here. But is there anything here that might entice a senior to come back? Yeah, sure. I mean, the college offers a lot of, um, we have a fine art center. Um, we have a lively art center where we offer tons of shows. We have athletic events where I know we get a lot of uh, people at those. Um, we also offer um, some classes for seniors where they can pay right, at, right up to the start of the semester where they just pay tuition free, but just pay for the fees. So they're able to sit in in some classes if they want to do that. So. Okay, so the community college, although it's usually occupied by lots of younger people, uh, is a good place for seniors to know about. Absolutely, absolutely. I think we offer, even we, we, we welcome everybody on this campus, so um, lots of stuff always going on. Right now, as a person who is in the field of health and well-being and physical fitness, what would you tell somebody who's watching and doesn't know whether they can compete in the senior games? What we tell them is, you know, it's really not about your skill, it's about having fun and really getting out and meeting people. And it's more of a, it's, 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 it's competitive, but it's also more of a social atmosphere and we welcome anybody, even if you haven't participated, you're not athletic, it doesn't matter. We encourage you to come out and meet other people. All right, well, thank you, Kelly, and thank you, the Montgomery County Community College for hosting the Senior Games again this year. Well, Joyce, it looks like you've been busy today. Oh, it's been very busy. It's great to see all our seniors out here and just participating in the games. All right, now, um, I used to serve on a committee, so I know you're with Aging and Adult Services for Montgomery County, but what kind of things are you talking to people about here at the Senior Games? Well, we're talking about the different benefits that they have as a senior, as far as the services we offer to keep them out of a nursing home for as long as possible. So we have the different programs that we offer, the waiver program, the option program, our community connection program, and several programs that will help connect them with the re uh, community resources that they need to be active and safe in our community. Well, you know, some seniors are nervous about asking for help because they're afraid you'll put them in a nursing home. Oh, no, our programs are designed to keep them out of the nursing home, safely in the community for as long as possible. All right, now suppose I was the daughter of an aging mother and I was worried about her and I thought maybe she shouldn't be living home all alone. What, what could I do? Well, you would contact our agency and we would uh, make an assessment, assess her to see what service she would be eligible for and we would go from there. All right, and how would I contact the agency? Our number is 610-278-3427 and it's Montgomery County Aging and you could ask for our intake and referral. Okay, and then somebody would contact me or my mother? 
Uh, they would contact your mother to make sure she's agreeable to having services in the home and we would go from her, assessment would be done, they would assess her for the program, see what her needs are, and we would go and try to provide the service according to her needs. And how do these services get paid for? Well, a lot of them are paid through the state lottery fund. We have few grants. We also have different funding. We work with the state. Um, the waiver program is funded through the county assistance office. So Medicaid, Medicare, we work with all resources. So the state sends you the money and you figure out how to get it to the seniors who need it. Well, yes, we, we do. They're kind of in transition right now. We're developing a human service program, which our director is Barbara O'Malley, and our acting director for the aging is Tracy Flynn. And we're in kind of in transition, but yes, we will make sure that money gets to the programs that are needed to keep our seniors in the community. All right, now we're going to put up your information on the screen, but what are people asking you for today? I see you giving out brochures and things like that. What, do you, what are people talking about? Uh, well, they're looking for the programs that would keep there. They're looking for in-home care. They're looking for adult daycare. They're looking for the Meals on Wheels program. They're also looking for transportation programs, and we look at all of that, and we provide all that. Adult daycare, they're looking for even dog walking services, so <laughs> I've been asking. So if people need help, they get in touch with your agency and you see what they're eligible for and you try to match them up. Is that right? Correct. Correct. We and try to match them up to the services to meet their needs. And is there any cost if they just give you a call? Uh, no, no cost at all. It's free for them and most of the services are free. They do have to have medical eligibility. And for some programs, there are financial guidelines, but most of the program falls within, you know, free services. All right, so the message is get in touch with you yes. and see what you might be uh, entitled to or eligible for and what you need help for. Is that yes. about right? That's about right. Thank you, Kay. All right, well, thank you, Joyce. Good talking to you. And you got some people at your table. You yes. better get back to work. Well, that's all the time we have for today's program. I'm at the Montgomery County Community College in Bluebell at the 2016 Senior Games. The weather's holding up, and I hope you'll be with us next year to enjoy either the Senior Games or the Expo. In the meantime, if you need any help with a state government service, please call my local office. That information will appear on your screen in just a moment. Thanks for watching.